A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy for the date 27th of March 2022. So these are the list of news articles chosen for today's discussion. We have five different news articles. In the first discussion we'll be seeing about India's export reaching 400 billion US dollars. We'll be seeing some of the significance of this event and we shall also discuss about the factors that aided India in achieving this milestone. Like that we'll see some of the important facts that are mentioned in the article. Next we'll be seeing about POSCO Act in prelims perspective. Followed by that we'll be seeing about a phenomenon called Aribada. Then we'll be exclusively seeing about Supreme Court in the next article. And finally we'll end our discussion by discussing about Hornbill species. So now without any delay let us move on to the first news article discussion. Today let us start our first discussion with this FAQ news article. See recently in our 24th March discussion we saw that India's exports for the financial year 2021-22 crossed 400 billion US dollars right. This article is the extension of that news article. Today this news article mainly focuses on how significant the achievement is. Then it talks about our country's import and trade deficit situations and finally it talks about the factors that might risk Indian exports in the coming years. The author of this article has also suggested some of the solutions to aid in the sustained growth of India's exports. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this discussion we will see all the points mentioned in the news article in detail. Before getting into the discussion I have highlighted the syllabus relevant to the article. You can just go through it. First let us start our discussion by looking at the significance of attainment of India's 400 billion US dollars export target. See only by understanding the significance of this achievement we can grasp the enormity of this achievement. Look at this table here. The data is from the RBI. From this table you can understand that even before the start of the pandemic India's exports was hovering around 300 billion US dollars to 330 billion US dollars. The situation further worsened during the pandemic year. See exports from India reached the lowly 313 billion US dollars. Compare this to the present scenario. On March 21, 2022 the value of India's export in the financial year 2021-22 hit 400 billion US dollars. In addition to this another 10 billion dollar worth of goods is planned to be shipped out by the end of the year on Thursday. So compared to the pandemic hit financial year 2020-2021 this is a 41 percentage growth. This 41 percentage growth in exports is a huge achievement even during normal times. But is the world normal now? No, right? The world has not recovered fully from the pandemic. The pandemic caused supply side disruption, right? Despite this disruption India's export grew. The next is the Ukraine-Russia war. See the war resulted in a shortage of shipping containers. This resulted in increasing freight rates. Even this did not affect India's export growth. And remember even in such testing times India not only achieved its target of 400 billion dollars exports but also it is expected that India's export will grow to 410 billion US dollars by the end of the financial year. Now I hope you understand the significance of this enormous achievement. Knowing this, now what are the factors that aided India in achieving this milestone? Actually there are numerous factors that helped India achieve this target. First is that globally post pandemic the prices of commodities mainly oil grew at a faster pace. This price rise resulted in India's export of petroleum products grow by 141 percentage compared to last year. See in India's export basket petroleum products accounted for 8.8 percentage share and this 8.8 percentage share is the largest contributor in India's export basket. So as the global price of petrol increased India's earning from export of petroleum products also increased. This is the first reason that helped India achieve its export targets. Second factor that helped India achieve this incredible feat is the performance of various sectors like engineering sector, chemicals, cotton yarn, handloom products and apparel industry. See in this to be specific the engineering sector performed extremely well. Engineering exports from India crossed 100 billion US dollars for the first time. This is a 46.5 percentage increase. 
See, along with these factors, even the pandemic to some extent helped Indian exports. In the pre-pandemic period, the world economy was extremely dependent on China. During the pandemic, the China-based supply chain got disrupted. So, the countries all over the world were looking to diversify their supply chain and were planning to reduce their dependence on China. India fitted the profile to replace China. This also helped India's exports. For example, shipments to the US from India increased by 47%. See, China and Australia have been locking horns for some times. This resulted in Australia planning to move away from China. This also helped Indian exports. For example, Indian exports to Australia increased by 94% this year. So these are the factors that helped India's exports. Now let us see the present scenario of India's import and trade deficit. See India's import bill is expected to grow. In the last financial year, India imported 393 billion US dollars worth of goods. It is expected that this year's import figures will be 200 billion US dollars above last year's figures. That is, for this year, India's import figure is expected to breach 593 billion US dollars. This is the present import scenario. Now, let us look at the trade deficit figures. See, in the financial year 2020 and 2021, India's trade deficit lowered to 1 or 2 billion US dollars. But this year, India's trade deficit, despite the export growth, is expected to reach 190 billion US dollars. With an increasing trade deficit, our current account deficit is also expected to increase. Although this is a cause for concern, our uh, RBI governor, Mr. Shakti Kanta Das, is of the opinion that there is no need to panic. He said that India has surplus forex reserves. India presently has 619 billion US dollars in reserves. Our RBI governor said our forex reserves can cover 12 months of imports. Compare this to the year 1991 when India faced the balance of payments crisis. In 1991, India had forex totaling just 1.3 billion US dollars. This could cover only the essential imports for just three weeks. So the increasing trade deficit is not a cause of worry due to enormous forex reserves. So this is all about India's current import and trade deficit scenario. Now let us see some risk factors that the Indian economy might face moving forward. First is increasing energy imports for India. See, as you all know, Ukraine Russia has pushed up the price of crude oil. As India imports around 80% of its petroleum needs, it is cause of worry. See, along with this, as the pandemic is nearing its end, so our economy is fast recovering. With economic recovery, our energy needs will increase. This will further increase our import bill and in turn our trade deficit. Second is in terms of edible oil. See, India imports most of its edible oil also and sunflower oil is one of the major edible oils. The countries presently at war, that is Ukraine and Russia, accounts for 80% of world sunflower oil production. So the war will push the price of sunflower oil also. Since India imports sunflower oil, the price rise will affect India's import bill. Finally, post-pandemic, the central banks of developing countries are slowly tightening their monetary stance. This might result in foreign investors moving away from emerging markets like India. This in turn will reduce the supply of dollars in the Indian economy. This will result in the rupee losing its value, that is the rupee will depreciate. In addition to this, the increasing trade deficit and current account deficit will put further pressure on the rupee. So, as the rupee depreciates, India's import bill will increase further. But there is some positive to this. As the rupee depreciates, India's exports will receive some boost. So, these are some risk factors that the Indian economy might face moving forward. Having seen this, now let us see some solutions mentioned by the author of this article. 
See, first is the fast conclusion of FTA negotiations. See, currently India is negotiating a free trade agreement with countries like US, Australia and Canada. When the FTAs are concluded faster, India will have access to the market of these large developed countries. This will help India's export to these countries as well. Second is the foreign trade policy for 2015-20 to 20 need to be revised. See, presently this policy has been given an extension up to first few months of financial year 2022 to 23 the revision of this policy is long overdue according to the author if the policy is revised reflecting our present times it will be greatly helpful for our exports see these measures can help india shield itself from the current european crisis and continue its growth path so these are all the important points that you have to make note of from the news article discussion Firstly, we discussed about the significance of attainment of India's 4 billion US dollars export target. Then we saw about the factors that aided India in achieving this milestone. Thirdly, we saw about the factors that helped India's exports. And finally, we saw some of the suggestions. Then we saw about some risk factors that Indian economy might face moving forward. And finally, we ended our discussion by discussing about some of the points or solutions mentioned by the author of this article. So these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article mentions four persons were held under the POCSO Act for assaulting a girl. That is all about the news article. Let us take this news article as an opportunity and revise some of the important provisions about POCSO Act. See, this act has been enacted to protect the children from offenses of sexual assault sexual harassment and pornography and it also provides for the establishment of special courts for trial of such offenses and related matters and incidences. Note that the act is gender neutral and it aims to ensure the healthy physical, emotional, intellectual and social development of the child or any person below 18 years of age. Note that the act defines different forms of sexual abuse including penetrative and non-penetrative assault as well as sexual harassment and pornography. The act further deems a sexual assault to be aggravated under certain circumstances such as when the abused child is mentally ill or when the abuse is committed by a person in a position of trust or authority. Now coming to the punishment under this act, see penetrative sexual assault on a child can lead to an imprisonment for not less than 10 years and may exceed even up to life imprisonment and fine. As you can see in the image, whoever commits penetrative sexual assault on a child below 16 years of age shall be punished with imprisonment for a term which shall not be less than 20 years and may extend to life imprisonment or the imprisonment for the remainder of natural life of that person and shall also be liable to fine. Similarly, look here, the act says that use of child for pornographic purposes can lead to imprisonment for not less than 5 years and fine and in case of subsequent conviction, the person may be imprisoned up to 7 years along with fine. See, in order to prevent the misuse of the law, punishment has been provided for making false complaints or providing false information with malicious intent. Usually, such punishment has been kept relatively light like six months so as to encourage reporting but in case the complaint is made against a child the punishment is higher up to one year note that the act provides for the establishment of special courts for the trial of offenses under the act and it incorporates child-friendly procedures for reporting recording of evidence investigation and trial of offenses for instances, the statement of the child can be recorded at the residence of the child or at the place of his or her choice, preferably by a woman police officer not below the rank of sub-inspector. Likewise, the police officer should not be in uniform while recording the statement of the child. So, these are all some of the important points about POCSO Act. So, in this discussion, we saw about some of the important provisions of POCSO Act. With these details in memory, let us move on to the next news article discussion. 
Now take a look at this news article. It states that Gahir Mata's beach witnessed an aribada. About 2.45 lakh olive redly sea turtles they crawled ashore on the Nasi to beach of the Gahir Mata marine sanctuary along the Odisha coast for laying eggs. It marked one of the largest opening day arrivals of turtles at the site. So this is the crux of the news article given here. So in this context let us discuss about aribada in prelims perspective since it is frequently appearing in news we may expect a question from upsc in this topic so just pay attention to the news article discussion see as you know olive red tree turtles are the smallest and most abundant of all sea turtles found in the world it inhibits warm waters of pacific atlantic and indian oceans see one of the notable feature of this creature is that these turtles along with their cousins here i am talking about the kemps redly turtle they are best known for their unique mass nesting called aribada so what is aribada it is nothing but a unique mass nesting what actually happens is thousands of females they come together on the same beach to lay eggs so it is a unique phenomenon where the pelagic species of olive redly turtles they try to increase the chance of survival of their offsprings now why do they do this see the turtle they lay more eggs at one place at the same time that is at a single time thousands of female turtles they come together on the same beach to lay eggs on the same time now this is done to supersede the conception of predators and increase the chances of survival of their offspring and this in turn increases the survival rate of offspring now just for your information aribada is predominantly concentrated at rushikulya by the mouth of the river devi and kahirmata beaches of odisha know that a single turtle can lay over 1010 to 1040 eggs and reports suggest that out of every 1000 hatchlings that enter the sea only one manage to reach full adulthood so this is the reason why they mass nest also and this extreme low rate of survival has therefore put them under the international union for conservation of nature's red list here you can see that the olive redly dig pits on the beaches using their hind flaps to lay eggs which are then covered with sand now after laying eggs hatchlings they crawl out of these eggs after an incubation period of 52 to 58 days and head straight for the sea with the rising sun as their lead now having seen about aribada now we'll discuss few points about olive redly turtles so knowing about these species is also very important it might help you in eliminating one or two options in the preliminary examination as i already said the olive redly turtles are the smallest and most abundant of all sea turtles seen in the world these turtles are carnivores and they get their name from their olive colored carapace so because of the color of their body they got their name as they are carnivores they mainly feed on jellyfish shrimp snails crab and a variety of fishes and their eggs see these turtles they spend their entire lives in the ocean and migrate thousands of kilometers between feeding and mating grounds in the course of a year now specifically talking about the threats faced by this species olive redlies are threatened by an ever increasing debris of plastic fishing nets discarded nets polythin and other garbage dumped by fishing workers apart from this other threats includes harvesting for skin and meat accidental capture and marine pollution and also make note of this olive redly turtles they are protected under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act 1972 it is listed as vulnerable in iucn red list it is also protected under appendix 1 of sites So in this news article discussion we saw what is this aribada phenomenon we saw why this phenomenon is adopted by the species then we saw some of the facts about olive redly turtles so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article this news article discusses about short tenures of women judges in supreme court it states that 11 women judges have adorned the supreme court so far but a majority of them have a tenure of less than 5 years only justice roma pal has completed a tenure of a little over 6 years between january 2000 and june 2006 So citing this Chief Justice of India NV Ramana said that the appointment of women judges should not be reduced to mere symbolic gesture 
he further said that the court would definitely benefit from the rich experience and the nuanced understanding of the law women judges bring to the table see short tenure of office as judge in the supreme court will reduce the chance of being part of a constitution bench which decide important questions of law and short tenures also mean not being part of or less time as member of the powerful supreme court collegium see in high courts women judges constitute 11.5 percentage in the supreme court there are four women justices out of the sitting 33 making it just 12 percentage and out of 1.7 million advocates only 15 percentage are women so there is a huge absence of women professionals in law and justice so this is the crux of the news article given here in this background we'll discuss about some of the important facts about supreme court in prelims perspective see note that article 124 to 147 in part 5 of constitution deal with organization independence jurisdiction power and procedure and so on of the supreme court here you have to make note of this point the judges of the supreme court are appointed by the president the chief justice is appointed by the president after consultation with such judges of the supreme court and high courts as he deems necessary similarly the other judges are appointed by president after consultation with the chief justice and such other judges of the supreme court and high court as he deems necessary the consultation with the chief justice is obligatory in the case of appointment of a judge other than chief justice Now we'll see about the qualification of the judges. See a person to be appointed as a judge of Supreme Court should have the following qualifications which I am going to mention. Firstly, he should be citizen of India. Secondly, he should have been a judge of high court in session for 5 years. Thirdly, he should have been an advocate of high court or high court in session for 10 years. Or the person should be a distinguished jurist in the opinion of the president. So from what all I said it is clear that the constitution has not prescribed a minimum age for appointment as a judge of the supreme court also the constitution has not fixed the tenure of a judge of the supreme court as well however it makes the following three provisions in this regard firstly a supreme court judge holds office until he attains the age of 65 years and any question regarding his age is to be determined by such authority and in such manner as provided by parliament Secondly he can resign his office by writing to the president and thirdly he can be removed from his office by the president on the recommendation of the parliament make note of all these points very very important now with respect to supreme court you have to know about the appointments of the acting judge and the ad hoc judges see the president can appoint a judge of the supreme court as a acting chief justice of india when the office of chief justice of india is vacant or the chief justice of india is temporarily absent or the chief justice of india is unable to perform the duties of his office and regarding ad hoc judges see when there is a lack of quorum of permanent judges to hold or continue any session of the supreme court the chief justice of india can appoint a judge of a high court as an ad hoc judge of the supreme court for a temporary period he can do so only after consulting with the chief justice of the high court concerned and with the previous consent of the president So that's all about the news article now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article and the pictures given here as you can see this article is regarding the hornbill nest adoption program of arunachal pradesh see the program was led by hunter turned protectors from the nishi tribe and they celebrate a decade of successful conservation and today we are not going to discuss in detail about this adoption program but instead we'll cover the hornbill and great indian hornbill in prelims perspective first let us see some of the important facts about hornbills see hornbills are tropical and subtropical birds named for their unusual large curved bills they belong to the family bicuroidae This family consists of approximately 60 species of old world tropical birds. Note that India is home to 9 species of hornbill. The northeastern region has the highest diversity of hornbill species within India and the 9 species of hornbills which has India as their home includes the great hornbill, rufous necked hornbill, wreathed hornbill, norcodam hornbill, Malabar pied hornbill, oriental pied hornbill, white throated brown hornbill, Malabar grey hornbill and the Indian grey hornbill. 
So UPSC might ask a species name and they might ask whether they belong to India or not. So if such a question rises, you can answer those questions with these facts. Now out of these, the great hornbill is the largest species in the country. Note that the hornbill festival celebrated in Naha land is named after this bird. It is the most admired bird for the Nahas. Also note that the great hornbill is the state bird of Arunachal Pradesh and Kerala. Now having a brief idea about hornbills, now we shall discuss some of the important points about great hornbill. See, as I said, the great hornbill, also known as greater Indian hornbill, is the largest member of the hornbill family. It is found in the evergreen forest of Kerala. Also, they are distributed in a range from western India through Indochina, south of Malaya and through Sumatra. See, these hornbills are found on sea level up to 5000 feet above ground. They grow to a length of 4.5 feet. As you can see in the images, the body is covered with black feathers and the wing tips have a band of white feathers. Now one distinct mark of the hornbill is their bright yellow and black cask on top of its massive bill. It looks like a helmet like head and a solid ivory. See the cask is hollow with little functions although they are believed to be the result of sexual selection. Male hornbills have been known to indulge in aerial cask butting flights. Female are smaller than the males and have blue instead of red eyes. They usually have short legs but have broad feet. Now talking about the conception pattern of Indian hornbills. See Indian hornbills are mainly fruit eaters but also actively hunt and eat insects, lizards, snakes and even nestling birds. They also like to eat various types of berries. Hornbills swallow most of their food whole instead of breaking it down first. After they consume the food, they will regurgitate what they cannot digest such as bones and pits. See Indian hornbills, they are rare and threatened with extinction. These birds are hunted in India for food and medicine. In Kerala, the main threat is the destruction of their habitat. Hornbills are hunted for their cask, which is nothing but the upper beak and feathers for adorning headgear. See, due to ongoing habitat loss and hunting in some areas, the great hornbill is evaluated as vulnerable in the IUCN red list of threatened species. It is listed on Appendix 1 of sites. And remember, it is protected at the highest level under Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So, that's all about the news article. In this news article discussion, we specifically saw about hornbills. Then we saw some of the important points about Indian hornbills. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. Now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is nothing but the preliminary practice questions. Now look at this first question. This question is about POSCO Act. Consider the following statements with respect to POSCO Act. Statement 1. The POSCO Act 2012 defines a child as any person below the age of 16 years. Statement 2. The POSCO Act does not provide for any period of limitation for reporting the child sexual offences. And Statement 3. Any person in charge of an institution who fails to report commission of a sexual offence relating to a coordinate is liable to be punished. Which of the statements given above is or or correct? So you have to choose the correct statement in this question. Option A, 1 only. Option B, 2 and 3. Option C, 1 and 3. And Option D, none of these. See, statement 1 is incorrect because POSCO Act defines a child as any person below the age of 18 years. It defines different forms of sexual offenses including penetrative and non-penetrative assault and even sexual harassment and pornography. We saw this in the news article discussion itself, right? So, the first statement is incorrect. Now, moving on to the second statement. Second statement is correct because typically the trauma that child sexual abuse victims endure prevents them from voicing their complaints immediately. So, recognizing this, in 2008, the Union Ministry of Law and Justice clarified that there is no time or age bar for reporting sexual offenses under the POSCO Act. Consequently, a victim can report an offense at any time, even a number of years after the abuse has been committed. So, statement 2 is also correct. Now, coming to statement 3, statement 3 is also correct. See, the act not only punishes the perpetrator of sexual abuse, but also penalizes those who have failed to report the offense with either imprisonment or fine or both. 
any person in charge of a company or institution who failed to report the commission of a sexual offence relating to subordinate under their control is liable to be punished with imprisonment under fine under section 21 of the act so the correct answer for the question is option b 213 only because the question asks for correct statement now moving on to the second question this question is about aribada statement 1 unique mass nesting called aribada is exclusive to olive ridley turtles statement 2 the iucn status of olive ridley turtle is endangered which of the statements given above is or or correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two and option d neither one nor two see the correct answer for the question is option d neither one nor two because both the statements are incorrect see both olive ridley turtle and kim's ridley turtle are best known for their unique mass nesting called aribada it is not exclusive to olive ridley turtles so the first statement is incorrect now moving on to the second statement second statement is also incorrect because this turtle is listed as vulnerable in iucn red list now moving on to the third question this question is about the judges of supreme court consider the following statements with reference to judges of supreme court statement 1 chief justice of india can appoint a judge of a high court as an ad hoc judge of the supreme court statement 2 president can appoint a judge of the supreme court as an acting chief justice of india which of the above statements is or or correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two and option d neither one nor two see the correct answer for this question is option c both one and two because both the statements given here are correct See in our discussion itself, we saw that the president can appoint a judge of the Supreme Court as an acting Chief Justice of India, right? This can be done when the office of Chief Justice of India is vacant or temporarily absent or unable to perform the duties of his office. And regarding ad hoc judges, when there is a lack of quorum of the permanent judges to hold or continue any session of the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice of India can appoint a judge of a high court as an ad hoc judge of the Supreme Court for a temporary period. So the correct answer for the question is option C, both one and two. Now moving on to the last question of this new article discussion. This question is about Great Indian Hornbill. Consider the following statements with reference to Great Indian Hornbill. Statement one: Great Hornbill is the largest species of hornbill in the country. Statement two: It is a state bird of Andhra Pradesh and Kerala. Which of the statements given above is or or correct? Option A: One only. Option B: Two only. Option C: Both one and two. And option D: Neither one nor two. See the correct answer for the question is option A: One one. Only. See, India is home to nine species of hornbill. We saw the names of those nine species in the news article discussion, right? The North Eastern region has the highest diversity of hornbill species within India. Out of these nine species, the the great hornbill is the largest species in the country. So, statement one is correct here. And moving on to the second statement, statement two is incorrect because great hornbill is the state bird of Arunachal Pradesh and Kerala. It is not Andhra Pradesh. So the correct answer for the question is option A one only. Today we have one practice mains question. Just go through the question, collect the points, and make sure you write an answer for this question. You can even type the answer and post it in the comment section for peer review. With this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, like, comment, and share, and do subscribe to Shankar Ayes Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.